Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. I'm Steven Silver, character designer and teacher, dedicated to helping you learn about the art industry and living up to your potential. Whippee! All right, so it seems that the video that I did last week just really started up uh, quite the conversation. And if you haven't watched that video or listened to just my thoughts behind it, I suggest you do so. It's just about the artist, you know, I felt just kind of getting screwed within the industry. And I know, you know, some people said, oh, you were so angry and so, uh, you know, passionate about it. And it's not my intention to to be angry, you know, it was just that last week it came over me, I said what I said, but this week I just kind of want to clarify things because a lot of things have been said, people have written a lot of comments, a lot of people have seen it, and we know that this is a real problem and a real issue and across many platforms. It wasn't people commenting just about the art animation industry, it's about people even working for companies like Tesla. You know, there was just like a lot of things discussed and also with the with the pay and I know we know what's going on in a lot of these other countries and these places where they're asked to do so many things there are no unions you know there's no protection there's just artists that just if you speak up you're told to shut up and if you're told to if you're not at that point yeah you're, you're kicked out you don't get the job so there's a lot of fear there's a lot of fear that people don't want to say anything because the fear of being blacklisted i've heard about that forever i know about that um i've probably been blacklisted myself for 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 my voice and not shutting up sometimes about things but it's a sort of risk that comes with it okay and i think it's just very important just to for all of us to get on the same page. And this is what it comes down to. And it's like my my gripe and my, well, my problem and what I'm trying to speak at a larger degree about, it's not about just trying to say that producers are the evil people in this world. They're not. They, they are not. And I have worked with amazing producers. I have. And, and one of my best friends is a producer. And, but I know he's one of the good guys, you know, and we have these discussions and I know where is that and I know what's going on. So it's just what's happening right now is just like this total miscommunication. And this is where the breakdown starts. And I know I've been talking just in discussion with this uh, one artist, this uh, producer, management person, whatever you'd like to call himself out in um, Europe that, you know, I, I respect this guy. And, we, and we've had, he's been writing me these personal uh, letters just very long and getting into these discussions. And I think it's just important just to, just to, just to say what we're trying to do here. I know, like I had mentioned too, nothing is going to change coming in with a, with a heated head and just being angry. And all of a sudden people will start to become threatened. And it may even be the producers where they say, Hey, I don't want to work with a bunch of these lunatic, crazy, rabid artists. They're going to eat us alive, so to speak. You know, they're probably not that afraid, but they don't, you know, we don't want this. We don't want the butting of heads. We don't want to be murdering each other. We don't want to be killing each other. That's not what my point is through all of this. My point through all of this is, and why I sort of, I'm going to mention the engine, car engine thing a bit again, because it was brought up. But my, my, my sort of analogy just behind the, the car engine is that, yes, there needs to be the driving, there needs to be the, the, the person with the idea. And oftentimes this is again where the creativity, the creative artist, the creative producer, the creative businessman, the creative entrepreneur, whoever you are, is the one who is starting this idea like, and I have an idea. I want to build a car. I'm going to, we need to make something better and bigger for producing cars and producing many cars like Henry Ford did. All right. But many of you guys may already know that Henry Ford wasn't the genius behind the, the cars being built. He was the guy that came up with the, he was making bicycles. He was the guy that had the genius idea to come up with the, the first assembly line of automobiles. But like he has stated in, in books and a book that I have read about Henry Ford, 
that he will even admit he was not the brains behind the operation in getting stuff done in the production and producing. He said, listen, it was all these these people that behind me that were the ones that, you know, were, were so much smarter and greater and doing all these, you know, other things to make things work. And a lot of people in business can, can say that. Walt Disney will never take claim that he was responsible for making everything. He was the, the genius, the guy, the dreamer, the, the ideas, and he has admitted without these people, you know, it's not gonna happen. Walt Disney was not drawing every single frame of animation. Walt Disney was, you know, was a great story man and all this, but as we know, it takes far more than one person to make anything a reality. No one could do anything alone, and we know that producers, aren't going to produce shows without the artists. Artists aren't going to be making shows without the producers and what people call the bean counters and everything else. And like all these other people in the, in the thing, it's all, we all got to work together in order to make something great. And this is the whole point that we all need to work together. And the idea behind a union that I'm so thankful that we have the union out here is it was a start. It was started and now we can grow beyond that. And the hope is that we can get it right and make something work right, that we can all work together and make something right that it starts to spread. Not like a disease, but to spread like a cure. And to create this cure amongst all other countries, whether it's the Philippines, whether it's Mexico, whether it's Japan, whether it's Korea, whoever it is that these artists aren't being screwed left and right in that sense. Because all of you guys know who have made comments, and there's thousands of you, who know what's going on out there? So there, there is this sort of aggravation and there is this feeling out there and it just needs to be talked about and discussed and that's the most important thing. But the idea with the engine is you can build this idea and you can have that and get this company started. But the reality of what the engine is the driving force, and that's to me where the artists come in. We are the driving force that makes the engine run. And how do you make an engine keep running well? Are you gonna make sure that you're putting fuel in the tank? Are you gonna make sure that you're changing your battery, that you're not overrunning your battery? Are you making sure that you're changing the spark plugs? Are you making sure you're getting a tune-up? Are you doing all these things? Yes, you know why? Because you know if you don't do that, your engine, you're gonna be pulled off on the side of the freeway like I saw coming home from a camping trip this last weekend of probably about five cars with their hoods up because their cars, they're, 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 it blew out. They didn't have enough water. The, the cooling system, whatever happened, ran out of gas, I don't care. We know what happens if things aren't maintained and they're not healthy. What happens to our own bodies if we keep abusing them and just not feeding them right? We're not getting exercise. We wear down and things happen and it takes a toll. And this is all that I'm trying to say is what's happening is artists are unfortunately becoming the sacrificial lamb to see how far can we push this engine before it breaks. And if it does break, well, you know, maybe we just, we got enough money in all honesty just to replace it and get another working part. And that's what, what's happening. And yes, is it a matter of someone wrote in one of the comments and discussing about supply and demand, which plays a huge role in this of supply and demand, where before the internet, quite honestly, you weren't, you, we were working in the studios, but you could only rely on hiring people that were within the LA area and seeing the portfolios. But now because of the internet and the worldwide reaching out of people, you can have multiple people from multiple countries doing freelance, doing everything. And you can start to say, wow, there is so much supply even though there is quite a bit of demand building, there's a lot of things happening out here in the animation industry between all the studios, right? They're all doing stuff, but granted, yes, there is a lot of the supply, but does that mean that just because there is a lot of supply and there are a lot of people that we can just, just treat people and just abuse them like this? My point is, don't you think by having a well-oiled machine, a well-fueled artist, a happy, healthy artist, that you're going to get just better results? That's all I'm just sort of saying. If we can work together and if producers and, and, and the people, the execs beyond them and the artists, if we can just kind of come to common ground and say, you know what, guys, 
we know there's the money out there. We know what's going on. I mean, one of my gripes, I'm not going to get into it uh, right now about it too, but just, and, I'm, and, and I don't want to be singled out here that I'm just standing up for character designers, but I do want to just make that point that the character designer is the franchise designer. You know, when you even just think about any character, whether it's the design of Shrek or it's the design of uh, Kim Possible or it's the design of uh, the, a minion or whatever it is, look at the merchandise that's created. These things just aren't a one-time thing. No art production is a one-time thing. There's These things get circulated. You can put stuff on air and you get all these people involved in these jobs and they make one episode of something that will have a shelf life forever. And especially with media now, where it can go and be played and watched thousands of times for many years and be turned into many products and many things. And the big businesses, which I'm all for big business, is going to reap the rewards at the end, yet that artist can get just thrown to the wayside and disregarded. And to me, it's just like, is that what you really want? You know, really? Is that what we're in this business for, just to step on each other? And I don't want, that's all, I don't want that. I don't want it to be a business that just keeps growing on the fact that artists are the dime a dozen. We can just spit on, chew them and spit them out, you know, and get the next person in and get that person just worn out. Let that person get a nervous breakdown. Let that person go through, you know, having to go through those struggles. Just, you know, so it's just about where can we find that common ground? What are the realities? And that's where, to me, just starting with discussing what's really viable in these job descriptions. I was working in the industry back in 97. I don't know when the union was formed, but all I know is when I got into the animation union and the guild, I didn't know anything about it other than that I had called up before I got in the industry and I called up the animation union and I heard about it and I spoke to someone on the phone and I still believe, I, I think it may have been Lynn who was sort of uh, running things there and, and talked to her. This was 1997. Hi, I'm, I'm looking to try to get into the animation industry and I'm just curious, like, how much should, would I expect to be making in this position? She was able to tell me this is something that you should look at. She started to break down what the union was doing in far of health benefits and all that. So I informed myself and then when I got into the position, it was, I, I sort of knew where I stood a little bit. And that's the benefit and the beauty that how great was it to have that? And why can't we spread? And I know a lot of people are so nervous and scared about speaking up. So I want to try to create something and introduce something and working with the union to try to develop something where people will be protected because this has been the gripe that I've heard when I was working in-house at studios. And I will say that I haven't worked in-house for almost 12 years now. I've been freelancing for the studios for the past 12 years. And But when I was in-house and when I go to lunches with uh, uh, artists and friends of mine, again, the gripes are, well, I'm not going to say anything, man. I don't want to get blacklisted. I don't want to lose my job. So people, things don't change because people are afraid to say something. So that's another element. Besides just trying to find out the job description, how can we develop some sort of system where we can get true um, knowledge from people where they do feel protected, but we can just get this intel and gather this intel and start to have a discussion because this is what it's coming down to. It's coming down to just making sure that we can have this discussion so that this train doesn't go so far off that we're, that we're all going to get lost in, in, in the end and, and just screwed. I mean, it's going to happen if things aren't resolved and things don't change. And because we have a union here, does that mean that we don't, uh, and because there's no union in these other countries that we don't even try here? I don't like hearing that. And that's what some of the comments I feel like I've sort of heard, that it's, it's not worth even trying. It's not happening for us, so why even bother? And all I believe in is the try. Is let's just try. Let's just try to make this amicable. Let's just try to resolve this. Let's just try to get together to where everyone's happy. Because I'm telling you, when you have, uh, you know, there's that saying, a happy, for those of you guys that are married, a happy wife, happy life, right? It's a true saying. If you can keep the people that you're working with that's surrounded by happy, you're going to get more results. So if I'm working for a studio, 
and the artists are extremely happy and that then the producers are happy. But the artists have to do their share too. Okay, one of my best friends is a producer. And he, I was telling, talking to him and he didn't know about this video that I put together and I just had conversation with him the other day just asking him about things that are going on and he says, you know what we try to do, we want to make sure people are happy. He didn't know where I was coming from in any of this and just says, we try to have meetings, we try to let them know that guys, if you guys are falling behind and you need something, you need to come and talk to us and let us know. And that's the part of the artist that the artist needs to speak up. If you're going through this, I hope that you have a kind enough producer to go in and have these conversations with that you don't feel so threatened that you're going to lose your job because that's where it becomes effed up. That if you're having those producers that are, are mean or aren't willing to listen to you or who are just like trying to just beat everything out of you. I, I, I want to get rid of those producers. You know, let's, let, let's get some, let's get some producers in there again who, who, who are, who are kinder if that, if that's needed. But why, why would you want that clash? Why have that clash? It's not necessary. So let's just try to make it work just a little bit more. But he talks to them. He goes in. And he said, you know, I've always been, you know, again, I don't know all the practices happening at studios, but I can tell you, I, I've had some amazing, maybe I didn't even mention it enough. And I want to mention that. I talked about different people that I've worked with from cleanup artists and different people. And so many artists I've worked with that just beautiful. I've worked with amazing directors. I've worked with amazing producers. My producer when I was at Nickelodeon on Danny Fanta, I mean, just awesome we're at Disney my god just so many great producers there and some of those people who are running the top of the chain over there just really care about I'm not going to mention their names but just beautiful women beautiful people who are just just they're running the show and they're always on the lookout and trying to help and I know just from experience some of the even with my friend and what he's doing just doing the right thing okay there's just unfortunately a lot of malpractice going on on a little different, a lot of different productions at different studios. I'm not, we gotta, sh we gotta put that out to the forefront and just know that that's the truth. And of course, those poor studios and those poor people in the, in the gaming industry and in the graphic design industry and all these other industries who are getting, you know, screwed left and right. Um, this is for a reason, you know, it's not for a reason. It's, it's for a reason that we shouldn't have this sort of thing going on, but I think it's lack of communication and it, but it's also about speaking up and this is what artists need to stop being so afraid of. I mentioned, uh, last week that, uh, when I did my video that I would go into the, the meeting and they, they tell me they want me to do this. And I said, it's not part of my thing. And they said, okay, no problem. You know, I want this much money. It became okay. No problem, but you got to speak up. It's the same thing with contracts. You, that's the purpose of contracts. And this is what artists need to be informed of and learn about that art contracts are not written in stone. The purpose of them is for negotiation. When you, you know, I change so many contracts and alter certain things and they say they're going to pay you on 90 days. And I go, no, no, no. Or you're going to pay me on 30 days and, and writing things like that. Again, every instance is going to be different on the, the amount of money you guys are agreeing upon. That's negotiation. You go back and forth. You don't need an attorney for that. Okay. So it's about artists becoming informed. And that's was my whole point too, was just about having the awareness, being informed and knowing what it is you're getting into so that the system doesn't keep getting worse and worse. Because as ill-informed people are taking these jobs and just going, okay, I'll just work for that and I'll do everything that you want me to do. And I'm not going to say a word. These are the people that start to get just their, 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 their energy starts to get sucked out of them because they think that's what I have to do. And if I say something, they're going to fire me. So there's no protection there. So this is where we're just trying to say, because this is an amazing industry and this industry is going nowhere. As long as there are kids on this planet, as long as kids are still being born, the animation industry is going nowhere. We all we're seeing right now is that content is king and that it's becoming more and more and more. Why? Because it is a money maker. Why is the animation industry thriving so much? Because it's a money maker. Why is Netflix able to pay their artists right now so much money? Because it's a money maker. I think eventually they're going to realize they're paying a bit too much, you know, for people. Um, but there's got to be this sort of balance. You got to do things smart. Again, you got 
to play, you got to get the right people that say, listen, this is your worth. And some people say, wow. And I was talking minimums, even though I was saying 1700 a week. Again, it's a lot of money. But there's people who are getting way more than that. Again, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a very healthy industry. This is not an industry that is destitute and desperate. It is the entertainment industry industry. And let us not forget that, that entertainment is what carries us through wars. When you look what happened during World War II, with if without the entertainment industry, without the animation industry, with these things that really help build morale, help take people out of depression and lift people up. It always has. The movies play such an amazing role in our life. So why do people get screwed? Some guy mentioned he was a stuntman. As his, they get screwed in their, in their union or their industry and things like that. It's like, why? What's the point? Is it because people are so afraid they're not speaking up that nothing changes and the producers just aren't being aware of what's going on? And I tend to think a lot of it is that. Again, I do think a lot of the producers, they just don't know what's really going on. So as producers, I ask you if you're going to watch this, and I hope you do, that you just say, you know what? Let you know, maybe we do need to change some things and let's get things out in the open. Let's hear what people have to say. Let's get this sort of like the, the, this fairness, um, you know, brought to the table just a little bit more. Let's have these meetings. Let's have a meeting once a week, once every two weeks and just have a, a, a checkup on everyone. Let's not, not neglect them and take them for granted. All right. Same thing here with artists. I think artists, if artists can start to just become more aware of what they need to do, their tasks at hand in a studio, because one of the most frustrating things for uh, production managers and producers are when things keep getting pushed back because maybe art directors or directors, they are not following through with their tasks or getting word or reviewing things quick enough. Sometimes, again, they're, they're getting piled on with stuff, okay? But taking sometimes that one moment priority to where the producers can maybe help set them up or help them, uh, right, part of their role, to help them saying, listen, we need to get this approved by today. That way it has to be approved. That way we can take, delegate this and give it to this artist, get it done so that we can ship this out on time. That way they don't have to get the frustration setting things back, starting to cost the studio more money. So we, what we all need to do is work this out together and just sort of uh, collaborate and try to figure out the best system so that things aren't becoming runaway budgets and crazy. The one thing that's sort of blown my mind away a lot of the time is how much money some studios will spend. There'll be $30 million in the hole before they're even, you know, b before the movies even started the true pipeline of everything. It's like, how, how is that? Where is the mismanagement there? You know, like, how can that much money get wasted so quickly? And it happens a lot in the feature world. How can that happen so fast in such a way that what about if we do something and organize that sort of structure to where that money can be delegated and distributed to where the artists are getting? Because remember, the artists are the engine in that facet where we have to be healthy and happy and working and running in order to make everything else work. Even though producers and executives play a major your role in even setting these things up and organizing us and wrangling us, we still play that major role. But what about, hey, you know what? We've saved $30 million. That money can be distributed. So number one, we can we don't have to just hire that one guy to do multiple things. Now we can hire two, three prop designers, four background layout guys just to get this system going. And I think even though the time on a production may be a little bit less because you have more people, if those more people were getting a decent wage, a decent salary and not feeling overworked, number one, you're going to get better productivity. You're going to get better results. You're going to get healthier, happier people, win-win situation, and they'll be happy. And even though they're working a little bit less, you know what we artists want to do? We want to be working working on our own stuff and we should be. We should not be working every waking hour for someone else in order for them to build up their franchise, to build up their multi-million production and us get kicked out when a production ends with nothing to write home about. We need to have that opportunity to be able to work for ourselves and work on things and, and you know, give it our best. When we're hired by a studio, 
I believe in this. You give it your best. You're being hired by someone. Give it your all. Give it your best. But how about, you know how much happier artists are going to be when they go, you know what? I'm able to do this productively for the studio. I'm getting a healthy salary. But man, I have time to go home and work on my own comic book. I have time to work on this. I have time to teach. I have time to do all this. And the environment can change in that realm. And that's another facet just to work on. You know, what? the first things first is let's get the, in feature, get, let's get the scripts figured out completely first. Why, why hire and put some of these artists and through, through, through the ringer? I know you're, you're keeping some of these guys employed and hiring them, giving them stuff, but I've, I've heard more complaints with artists who are working on stuff and doing so much just for it to get thrown out the window, right? That's often what happens. It's the nature of the business. You work on a lot of stuff. Storyboard artists will work out this scene upon scene and bust their ass just to, to be like thrown out. No, we changed the script and altered. It happens. I know that. But it doesn't happen that much on TV, you know, on the TV side of things, you know, we getting the scripts, we go through the scripts, it's sort of like planted, you know, things can change and alter, but there's a structure there where in the feature aspect, they could spend all this money, all this time rendering, animating, doing all these things, and it just gets thrown out the window. What a waste of money. There is so much waste of money. There is, and if you're not willing to admit that on that side, I don't know, there's something wrong, but there is such an enormous amount of waste of money when you go, let's just start to really figure this out. How can we stop wasting all this money and really get the structure going? Let's really get the script solid before we even start hiring the whole team of people. Let's just figure this out. Yeah, things change in story. You're going to start to watch it and realize that maybe it's not working structured as much as it should be and things are going to change. But I, I know that there's a lot of problems and these are the things that we have to sort out and figure out in order to make everything start working and getting everyone into a happy, healthy situation because right now it's becoming too contentious and it's the artists who are becoming just, just feeling just so taken advantage of and abused. Isn't that worth changing? Isn't that worth speaking up for? Isn't that worth trying to make an adjustment before it becomes way too late? And that's why I feel we got to make these sort of changes now. So where do we start? I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I know that if we can collaborate and meet up and, and if I can, you know, and I'm going to join a committee uh, I was, to, you know, people were writing already. There's a, you know, committee that I know that I'm going to be a part of and, and see where it goes. But let's just, let's just get this started. Let's get this party started, people. Let's just sort of just get this collaboration work and let's get on the same page. Let's get a little bit of fairness. And again, don't tell me that, especially these major studios can't, can't afford these things or structure this just a little bit better. They can. They're capable. I know they are. You know you are. You're capable. We, we can do this. Some of these smaller startups. Listen, I believe in sweat equity. When you're starting a small company, when you're building up, sometimes you're going to, you know, put in that time just to get things started. But if that's the case, you hope that you have a bigger chunk of the pie when it comes down to it. Everything that I've done in my own personal career, on all my own projects that I've started, all the apps that I've developed, all the books that I've done, and, and mainly with the apps, have been sweat equity. When I've worked on these things with my, with my partner, we're not getting paid when we're doing this. We just start with an idea and we put it out there and see how it manifests. And if it works out, we both reap the rewards and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you're going to be starting up with a company and you're going to be working for a lot less because your hope is to grow something, I hope that you have a little bit more equity in the outset when it comes to fruition. When it makes something that you're not just treated as just the artist and a weekly salary, but you're partly responsible for making this a reality. So yeah, there's going to be that sweat equity where you're going to have to wear multiple hats and you're going to have to put in the time. I am not trying to get out and trying to make um, an excuse for not working. That is not what this is about. This is not about... You know, not just say, well, I don't want to do that. This is my job role. I don't want to have to do, I don't want to have to help out. Of course, you're going to help out in certain situations when they're needed, but let's just get it up in the forefront. Let's just get this discussed. Let's just work this out. Let's just know where we stand. Let's just make people give them what they sort of feel like they're sort of needing. And let's not just try to get away with it because no one's saying anything. So it's up to you, the artist, to say something. And I understand your fear.
I do. So this is another main problem we got to work out. We got to figure this out. This is going to be part of my thing that I'm going to try to try to work out. I, I brought up a, a scenario at one point to the union. Nothing ever happened with it, but I wasn't fully involved in the union. And I'm going to try to bring it up again. And I hope that more people will listen this time and we can try to bring change. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to just try to do my part. And, if, and I encourage you guys, if any of you guys have ideas, again, this is not all about just one person doing this. Let's all try to offer some real Causes and, and, and I would say if you guys can write something in these comments of just real substance and I, you know, it's not just, you know, it's not just getting angry at people. Again, we're not here to fight. It's that we want to, we want to celebrate with parades, you know, not battles. And we want to make sure that everyone's on the same length. But if you have something where you go, you know what? I have a great suggestion, which could potentially do this. Offer your ideas. This is what is just so important about innovation. This is, you know, what's going on with a lot of licensing now and a lot of all these companies like, uh, you know, like, like a company like Johnson and Johnson or just all, all these companies, just huge companies who make products all the time. They have what's called open innovation and the open innovation. They realize that it's no good just having three or five just uh, development people, what do they call them, uh, just uh, product and development, you know, where people are just coming up with, hey, this would be a great flavor toothpaste, or let's make this product to sell and make some, you know, a pasta that tastes like this, you know, instead of just people who are just there trying to come up with ideas, they have open innovation, where they want everyone, they want the, the housewife, they want the, whoever it is, the, the stay at home person, I don't care, this person in this business, what suggestions do you have? And if you, and if we like your suggestion, you're going to get a piece of, you know, a, a part of it, right? So it becomes this open innovation because they know so many people have great ideas and that's what we need. And I know a lot of you guys have suggested join the union, be all that. I didn't mean just join the union. You can't just join the union unless you're part of a union studio. That's how you get into the union. If you get hired by one, then they're going to ask you to join the union and you join the union. I didn't realize that the union website currently right now isn't for everyone to be a part of, that it's sort of, uh, you have to be part of the union. Um, but maybe that's something that we need to do. What can maybe the local 839 union do to maybe create another Facebook group that allows everyone to get there where we can post on the message group, things that is for everyone. You know, I know there's some sensitive things that the union doesn't want to maybe have a full on open discussion with everyone because they need the insight from the union people, but uh, maybe creating a group like that where everyone can start to be informed, where we can start posting, whatever we post on those sites, we can just start posting on this other Facebook group, but where you can give your true sense. And again, not just fighting and bickering, but real world solutions. That's what we need. We just need solutions. We need the innovation. We need the community. And for those of you who feel threatened that you don't have a union, well, we we have one here and this can be the start. This can be where we start and we try here to start getting that going to, because because maybe if we can do it right here and really set the precedence that it can start to spread to other countries, the Philippines and other states and uh, Japan and here and there and everywhere else that other people can say, look, this is what they've done and, you know, at least present it without feeling just they're going to not get their jobs. But we got to start somewhere. How does anything change without the start? And that's all we're trying to do. And that's all I want to help be a part of and do. Can we make this change? Can we do something? And I'm asking for your guys' help. I'm asking for you guys if you have any, you know, solid ideas that you think we could do to start improving. Let's start this discussion. Let's not just make this just about what our union's going to do. Let's the all of us start to discuss what we can do because maybe this can spread to the to the to the stunt doubles and the uh, and other industries and everything else and for crying out loud the gaming studios and the gaming industry who is suffering right now in many ways because they don't have a union and are finding it hard to organize and what can we do and and how did we even organize I don't know I don't know how the and that's something I got to research and just talk about how did the animation union organize how did we even get one to start in the beginning let's go all the way back and say listen. Way back then, in that year, we did it back then, and it may have started, I believe, after the stripes during the with feature animation 
way back when is where it, I, I believe started because they went on strike and then something came of that. But that's where we were ending up where, when we started to write in the guidelines. It was written that we can't strike and I don't want to strike and I don't think and we should strike. I think we should be able to just let's just work this out. Let's just start talking. It's not about artists against producers, producers against artists. It's about getting that common ground and just uniting and working together. I remember watching, listening to this story it, where they, and, and I'm not going to remember everything, so, so bear with me here, but it was about this, this summer camp, this camp that was created I think it was like in the 50s or 60s. And the intention of this camp, it was almost a social experiment where they, they split up the camp. They had these two sides and they did things on what all of a sudden started to happen because they split them up. They became rivals automatically. It all almost became like Democrats and Republicans, right? Um, it's also all of a sudden they're just like split up. They're like, I'm going to go against you. You're going to go against me like two different football teams, right? You're just against each other. And that's for all the English football and American football people. So we can get along and just say, call it football. But, um, or soccer, you know what I'm saying. But so they had the two different sides. So what they started doing just because of human nature, human nature, they just started to have a rivalry. There was all of a sudden a battle. I'm better than you. You're better than me. So you know what they did? Then they formed a field trip where they were going to go on this field trip. They all had to go together now. So they had these buses. But intentionally, they put these buses or I think it was whatever it was. They made it get stuck in the mud. All of a sudden, they created a problem where all now these two sides, they wanted to go somewhere and move forward, so to speak. But now they had to come together. And now what happened was they ended up uniting. They all figured it out. How are we going to get this out? Let's work together. They worked together. They solved the problem. And after that point, they all became friends and they all were pretty much holding hands, you know, and there wasn't this tension where they wanted to take each other's heads off like it was before. And that's the exact same premise what I'm talking about here. It's just part of the human nature. It's not about producers and artists just bashing heads. It's about let's Let's try to meet halfway. Can we do something? Can we compromise? Can we work this out? Can we make this something where we can just get this going and do something right and really be a platform for this industry and start something, especially here in Los Angeles, because we have the local 839. Uh, can, can we do something? Let's do this, guys. Let's make this work. Let's get together. Let's make this work. I want to have union meetings where we're bringing in producers and we have people and let's talk. Let's have a round table. Let's communicate that I know we can do this, but we, no one can do it alone. I can't do it alone. Other union people can't do it alone. Producers can't do it alone. Artists can't do it alone. We all have to try to figure out a solution. So let's not fight. It's not about fighting. It's about unity, collaboration, Let's make this work together. We can do it. Let's bring ideas to the table. Let's, we're going to go back and forth. We're going to have different mindsets, philosophies about things. But at the end of the day, what do you want? You want a well-oiled machine. And if that machine is running well, trust me, it's going to pay in dev dividends. You, you companies out there are going to be like, you're going to grow and keep building because you got the team of these happy artists and not just like, you know, you're not doing any sort of abusive things. And I guarantee you, your company is going to be a success. It's going to just be a success. This is just how it works. Look at things. Look at history. Look at things before us. This is how it works. We have to do this. And that's my call to arms. That's my call to action. Let's participate. Let's not be afraid to stick up or say something. Well, I'm going to try to do something where I feel we can do it anonymously. One of the ideas is to work and collaborate with um, a programmer to, uh, to make this work and maybe even get the union to help cover the costs and pay you, the programmer, to help do it, what it is that I want to create. Okay, so maybe you are a programmer and maybe you can just off offer that, but I don't think it's going to be a pr problem getting someone, a developer to make something that I feel will really help this industry. And all I can do is offer ideas and maybe let's implement some of them and see what happens. But let's do this. Let's, let's do this together. You know, I mean, again, it's, it's not all about sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. That's not what we're talking about here. It's not all going to be 
so happy and healthy. There's going to be some rough patches and we're going through that rough patch right now. And we know that it's not just about designers and prop artists because I'm a designer, but that's not what it's about. It's about what's going on with the other aspects of this industry. There's so many more people that need to be taken care of, looked out for. I worked in an industry in 97 where and all the way up through now, and I know that Disney even implements these same things today. They got their prop designers, they got their character designers, they got their layout artists. They separate these positions still, and people are still being paid for that. That's how it was in back in 97. And these studios weren't making nearly as much in revenue back then as they're making today because of all the other outlets that they can reach. They're making 10 times more today than they were making back in 97, yet they were able to pay those wages back then and they were able to support the artists. There was a time at Warner Brothers where in between projects, if you weren't working on a project, they didn't even fire you or lay you off. They just had you develop other stuff. You know, hey, listen, since you're here, and there's nothing to work on, let's get you developing, you know, some stuff. This happens at Feature all the time right now. In between projects, artists are getting paid a lot of money to sit around and twiddle their thumbs and do nothing in between projects, just mainly to hold on to the artists. But, you know, hey, we're, we're, I'm not saying, you know, let's kind of think about, okay, well, we're doing that. Let's really maybe get some of these artists to, to do something and give them a greater incentive. Maybe if we get them developing their own thing, you know, and we're paying them, but because they're developing it, that they're good, we're going to help make them a producer on it to where maybe if that show does get made and turn into something that they reap the rewards and benefit too. So they don't feel like they're being taken advantage of. This might stop the sort of exodus that's happening at a lot of these studios from Pixar and Disney and all these people leaving these studios. Why are they leaving? What's the problem? Why are people leaving Pixar? Why is Pixar paying not as much as some of the other studios? Why was this price fixing going on? Why are these things going on, guys? There, there's a whole madness and there's a reason for this. But I think producers, executives, you guys need to get artists in the room. You need to get artists in the room and have real, open, honest discussions. And it's going to benefit your company in the long run, I guarantee you. You're going to get people and team players. That's what we want. So that's where I'm at. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys next week. Take care. I wanted to give a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys. To subscribe to my mailing list and stay updated on future workshops and events, please go to my contact at silvertoons.com and simply hit join mailing list. Until the next time, make it a great week and thank you for listening.